In this lesson, we'll talk about how to work with purchased alphabets that come in various machine file formats. This applies to all levels. I'm working in Digitizer. When we look at a design like this, we see text. But Hatch doesn't read or see the way we do. Instead, it sees by object type on the sequence docker. So if we go over here to the sequence docker, we see a lot of different icons. And we scroll down, well, let's just double click on this. And we can see that this is a Hatch text object. And I know that because it has an A here. These other ones aren't. And what we're going to look at in this lesson is what happens when we use stitch file alphabets. So when using the lettering tools in Hatch, we have two types of fonts we can choose on the lettering docker. If I double click on this in the design window, you can see that I'm using an embroidery font and it's called Fishtails. Embroidery fonts, technically known as Hatch system fonts, are indicated by this red zigzag icon. These are professionally digitized embroidery fonts and are installed in the Hatch system folders. Now you might hear these called ESA fonts because they have a file extension of ESA. If I pop open this window and we scroll down some, yeah, I have a lot of fonts that you might not have. They're available elsewhere. And we here we see the true type fonts. And these are Windows system fonts. And these are indicated by this little TT, and they include both two type and OTF fonts. And these are installed in your Windows system folders on your computer. Now these are not embroidery fonts, but if we select one, they can be converted to embroidery. They won't appear up here with these other ones. They'll still be a true type, but on the sequence docker, they will have this A icon. So any fonts that you create through the object properties docker using the lettering tools are going to have this A. And the value of that is that we'll be able to do all these different things to them. Now, both of these types of letters are referred to as keyboard fonts. And that's because we add them by just typing on the keyboard using the keys that represent their associated character. Now, if we look at this one, this says believe. We see it as believe, but Hatch just sees it as a collection of stitches. And that's because this design was created when I was transitioning from my old software to Hatch. And so some of the fonts I had in my old software I really liked and I wanted to use them in this design. So I created them over there and then I finished the rest of the fonts that I had other fonts for in Hatch. This is a file that has both Hatch elements, Hatch objects, and stitch file elements, what I call stitchy bits. Now, if you've been embroidering for a while, you may have some fonts, or more accurately, alphabet sets that you've collected. These sets consist of a collection of files with one character per design. So if we go to the design library, we can see that here is Artisan, and it comes in four sizes because these are stitch files and they're not as scalable. And also, <laughs> you want to have different underlay and compensation settings for each size. But here I'm looking at Artisan 50, and if I pop open that folder, you can see that the files are organized into lowercase, uppercase numbers, and punctuation. And here we can see them all. But notice they have an extension of DST. So these are just going to be stitch files. And it's just going to be a design file. These are not keyboard alphabets in here. So to use these, what you would do is treat them like any other design in the design library just like a butterfly, a bird, or flower. And really, when you bring in designs from the design library, they can be either EMB or they can be a machine file format like these are. So let's look at this other design. Now up here, you can see where I've used the insert design command to bring in all my letters for my word. And they came in all kind of piled up in a stack there because when you insert a design, it brings it in in the same position as it was saved in the original file. So it's going to stack them all in a pile like that. And I did bring them in in the order that I wanted to use them. So the next step is that I have to move these things around and figure out how to get them lined up because they're not going to be exactly lined up perfectly. And that can be somewhat tricky. So here I've done my best effort to get them aligned properly. 
Now I do happen to have the same font as a embroidery font or an ESA font. So if I double click on that one, we can see that it's amethyst. And I've just typed it in like we do any other embroidery font. And you can see that my alignment here doesn't quite match that one, but you know, no one's going to know. It looks okay. Now, one tip I want to give you here is that these letters all happen to be one chunk. So all the pieces are attached, so they come into one little cell here in the object sequence stalker. Now, if we had a letter like, let's say, J, a lowercase j that has the J part and then the dot part, if it's big enough, that letter is going to come in as two pieces. It'll come in as the J and the dot. And if we were to move those around, we'd have to move them together. If you're working in Personalizer or Organizer, any design you bring in is going to be automatically grouped. So when you work with designs like this, it might be nice to have them come in automatically grouped if you're working in Composer or Digitizer. And what I like to do there is I'll go up here to Software Settings, Embroidery Settings, and check this box, Group Designs on Opening or Insert. And that way I know all my pieces are going to come in as one unit. Now I know that some of you have amassed huge collections of fonts that are stitch files. If you have a favorite set that you really like, you might find something that already matches in the font dropdown. So if I double click this, we can see that, well, I do have fonts that you won't have, but Hatch does come with a wide range of fonts and you may find something that's either really close or even a match. Now, if you don't, there are additional fonts available on the Hatch website. So let's go take a look at those. So here I am on the Hatch website. And if we go over here to products, you can go to font packs and you can see all of the fonts that are available. And there's some nice collections here. So you can take a look at those. Now, if you don't find what you're looking for on the Hatch website, there are designers who make fonts that will work with Hatch just like any of the built-in fonts. Just Google ESA fonts to find them. So instead of adding more stitch file fonts, add these instead. It's totally possible to work with stitch file alphabets in Hatch. Just remember, they are a design file, just like any other machine file. Hatch only sees them as groups of stitches, not as Hatch lettering objects. ESA fonts may cost a bit more than a stitch file font, but you don't have to get multiple sizes. They have way more flexibility and control, plus they were manually digitized by professional digitizers. Also, while it's possible to use the tools in Hatch to recognize these machine file alphabet files as Hatch objects, they will still be stitch objects, not text objects. Only text that has been created with the lettering docker, whether using an embroidery font or a true type font, will be a hatch text object.